Hi everyone, so this is basically the second in a series of videos based on dynamic electricity and in this video we're going to be looking at the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Now when we're talking about series circuit and parallel circuits we're really talking about the path that the electron takes throughout the circuit. So in a series circuit there's only one path for the electrons to follow and all electrons must take this path. Whereas in a parallel circuit, there's multiple paths for the electrons to follow. That means the electrons really have a choice to choose what path they're going to take. Now, in industrial settings, and when I mean industrial settings, anything that has to do on a large scale, so for example, a house, houses are usually wired with parallel circuits in mind. And the reason why is simply because if there is a break in one of the paths, the entire circuit doesn't fail. So the electrons can still make their way throughout a circuit. And an example that you can see this is a, a light fixture that has multiple light bulbs in it. If one light bulb burns out in a parallel circuit, you're still going to have light going through the different fixtures. Now if it's a series circuit, it means that if one of the elements stops working, the entire circuit will stop working. The reason why? There's only one path for the electrons to follow. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at a diagram for a series circuit and a diagram for a parallel circuit and compare the two. So here we have an example of a series circuit. And as you can see, a series circuit again is a circuit that only has one path. And we can tell that there's only one path because there's only one loop. So if we're following the path of the electron, starting from our power supply, going through our switch, down to the buzzer, and then back from the power back to the power supply. There's only one path, so the electron doesn't really have a choice of what elements it's going through. So that's very characteristic of a series circuit. Series circuits uh, tend to be quite simple in the sense that you're not going to have lots of elements plugged into a series circuit simply because there's only one path. So all of the elements that you will have in a series circuit are just going to be following one another. Whereas in a parallel circuit, you can have multiple paths making the circuit not only much bigger, but more complex. So we're going to look at another example of a series circuit, which is going to be a bit more complex, but not as much as this one. So here we have another series circuit. Uh, same thing, we have a power source. In this case, our power source is a battery. Now, the difference between a power source and a battery, so a battery, we can see we have two long parallel lines in between two short parallel lines, where in a power source, we only have, excuse me, one long parallel line and one short parallel line. And the long parallel line on top is your positive terminal. The negative uh, terminal is the smaller parallel line on the bottom. The same thing right here, where the positive terminal is on the top and the negative terminal is on the bottom. Now, if we're following the path of the electron, again, starting from our battery, going down through the first resistor, through the second resistor, and then back to the power supply. So again, another example of a series circuit. The next image that we're going to look at is a parallel circuit, and you'll be able to see the differences between the two right away. Now the first thing that you should notice with your parallel circuit is I have a branch point. So our branch point is right here. Now at the branch point, this is where your electrons can choose the path. Now with your choosing paths, um, what's really good about a parallel circuit is if something happens in one of the paths, you can still have your electrons go back to your power supply so your circuit is still going to function. And we're going to see right here. So we have our power supply, electrons travel, go through the switch, go through a fuse, and then, ah, this is my branch point. So my electrons can either choose to go down through the second fuse and through the light bulb and then go back to the power supply or they can choose to continue along this path go through the light bulb and again back to the power supply so in this parallel circuit i actually have two paths 
Now, a parallel circuit by definition has to be minimum two paths. Maximum, pretty much for your heart's desire. We're gonna look at another example of a parallel circuit and you're gonna see the same main characteristic, that the electrons have a choice of where they're going. So here we have not only a parallel circuit, but we have three paths. How can we tell? We have basically two branch points. So if we're going through our electrons, leaving the terminal, draw it, then stop. At this point, my electrons can either go up and go through lamp three, and then continue back to the power supply, or continue on their way. So this is your first branch point showing between path one and path two. So going, 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 and oh, I have another branch point. Again, I can either go up and go through the lamp, or I can choose path three and go through my resistor and then back. So overall, in summary, series circuit, I only have one path for electrons to go, so one path. And parallel circuit, I have two or more paths. So in our next video, we're actually going to be looking at uh, the dynamic electricity symbols so we understand what each one means. Hope this helps, and have a great day.